Hey guys, my name is Jesse Phillips. I'm co-founder and CEO of Trustware. We're a Techstars-backed blockchain infrastructure company on a mission to create a more connected, more equitable, and better world by harnessing decentralized technology. We focus on democratizing financial access. Today, I want to start with a story. This is 11 years ago while I was traveling in Guatemala. Witnessed a dude step onto this bus, hand the driver some cash, and basically say, my cousin is sitting in the middle of the road in 10 kilometers. Unfortunately, what you see here happened, which is that our minibus broke down within about 10 minutes. When we finally resumed our journey a couple hours later, the man's cousin was gone, making the transaction impossible. So here's me at 19 years old, coming from a world of Amazon, iTunes, credit cards, and digital banking. You see, in the United States, I had limitless financial choices, but this guy had to rely on uncertain in-person transfers. Why? Well, the answer was and still is financial fragmentation. You see, even with the rise in mobile money services providers over the last 10 years, uh, financial options for most people haven't really changed that much. This is because the, the problems are systemic. Current centralized solutions generally ride on these antiquated banking rails and are gated by physical uh, jurisdiction and banking and ID requirements. They're high friction with dodgy in real life access high transfer fees and low transfer speeds, cough, cough, Western Union. And um, well, they've also got a lack of platform interoperability and limited, limited currency pairs. Even if you get through all of this, um, you're generally stuck in your own currency and that, uh, that can get really bad when there's uh, serious inflation. On the decentralized side, despite solving a lot of the problems around democratization, they really fall short because they're way too complex. Using them right now is like command line versus an operating system. Sure, you could go with the easy option, but then you get FTX or uh, self-custody, but it's scary. It's essentially the digital equivalent of having cash under the mattress. And finally, fragmentation. Blockchains don't really talk to each other well across Web 2 and Web 3. So the current solutions on both sides are failing and harming users. That's why we exist. And we're abstracting away the complexity building systems that maintain user autonomy and ownership and connecting them seamlessly to financial services globally. We believe we can revolutionize financial connectivity by taking the best of both worlds, effectively Web3 and Web2 close. And so today I'd like to show you our first product, .ox Names. If you remember nothing else about today, .ox is effectively global on-chain Venmo. It's available to anyone with an internet connection anywhere with nearly any asset, and basically, it's your passport to a revolutionary financial frontier where one universal account spans multiple blockchains, connecting you to your favorite apps, friends, global businesses, all without the hassle of managing numerous wallets or accounts. So with Trustware, you can instantly send money to anyone in the world using just their OX name. Your money travels on transparent and secure blockchain rails, and it's held by you, not a bank or a large institution. So it's available when you need it. And you can store your assets securely with multiple layers of security, connect to other financial and social applications, such as your bank accounts, wallets, exchanges, credit cards, fintechs, applications across Web2, Web3, you name it. So let's take a look at how it works. Um, under the hood, we've got our human readable usernames. These are payable across chains, as I've mentioned. Think about it similar to ENS, but they're built on Axelar. What does this mean? Well, they're available across 51 blockchains as of this morning. Um, you can think of kind of Trustware as the universal router or resolver like Cisco. While Axelar handles the routing, um, we bundle everything into a simple package, giving user the ability to manage many wallets underneath. And this is kind of what it looks like. Next, we've got our simple self-custody security and recovery paradigm. Um, effectively, we've built a version of multi-sig. Uh, the important thing to know here is that all keys are owned by the user. Two out of three keys to sign the transaction any two out of three keys can recover or replace the third. So you're actually recovering from yourself. If you lose one, uh, uses the smartphone you already have in your pocket. Um, no centralized or or you know counterparty risk, even us. Um, by the end of basically developing this, it should feel very similar to Apple Pay. Um, and finally, the accessibility part. It's one account that plugs into financial account apps across Web 2 and Web 3. And because many wallets are actually managed under this name, say, jesse.ox, you can actually offer functionality across these many chains uh, via simple API integrations. So 
OX names are really powerful alone, as we've seen, but they're even more powerful when they serve as the central hub or transfer layer between financial applications. And this is where it gets really interesting. Um, take a look at our go-to-market. Um, this is with a company called Pippet. We're in final stage negotiations here. This allows us to do 1,500 cash-in and cash-out locations across uh, most of the developing world, right? So, so here we are basically piggybacking on mobile money, remittances, stable coins, peer-to-peer -peer payments, um, and linking previously unlinked financial applications as, as kind of OX is the decentralized hub, again, through these API connections. So it starts getting really interesting when you look at that, because this is kind of the missing link allowing for previously unlinked things to now be linked. A good example of this is Mesh, which would allow us to connect, for example, our Binance account, and we could exit via Beam, which would be directly into a credit card, or print a, a, a link that allows you to get your crypto via peanut protocol. Um, and so this is this is kind of using the .ox name as the decentralized hub instead. Um, oh. Uh, the data is showing so at this point, oh, I yeah. guess yeah, at this point we're out of time. I'll just give you a couple of seconds to wrap up. Yeah, um, data is showing we're on to something. We don't just play in one of these markets, we play in all of them. Our business model is pretty dreadfully simple. Uh, we take a transaction fee, we charge for usernames free to 10,000 bucks if you really want a vanity plate, and we register between the people that we're, uh, we're kind of sending attention to, as well as this is our way of co opting the competition. Finally, we're a, a, a damn good team, if I do say so myself. Um, I come from a long uh, long time in the centralized exchange side. I know essentially what we're up against. Um, my co-founder is a four-time founder. We both met at Draper University. We've been doing this a long time. And we've got a payments expert on our team, as well as a fully global team, five, five countries represented um, across. Um, can I just say this last thing? I think this is the last bit. Okay, cool. Um, what you've seen here basically is one application built on on Trustware. The future is B two B to C SDKs. So everything that made that we went that we built um, to make .ox names possible, we are looking for support in order to release that so that any relationship based app can be built on these frameworks. So you decide. All of these things are relationship based apps. What will you build today? If you're interested in this, give me a ring. Thank you so much. Thanks for that, Jesse. We'll now move into a time of question and answer with the judges. So how much of this did you actually build already and how much is like still like a thought process? Yep. Um, so we will be releasing testnet very soon with the .ox names. Um, we are not fully available across every Axelar supported chain yet. Um, that would be a massive undertaking. There's 51 as of this morning. Um, we'll be launching with about five. Uh, the .ox names as well as the security paradigm are built. Um, the issue with security paradigm is that we do not want to release it without audit money. Um, and so that's why we're raising effectively is uh, for that audit money in order to layer in the security paradigm, as well as to expand our dev resources to build out um, everything we've done in SDKs. Um, but in terms of what you've seen in this presentation, basically these are all all screenshots for the most part of what the actual application looks like. Um, the last thing I'll say is that the um, API integrations are still coming. So kind of what you saw in that beginning of the OX launch, um, where it's just kind of that that peer-to-peer -peer payment system is really where we are right now. And we're, we're essentially building out the rest of it. Okay, got it. Oh. Thanks, uh, Jess, for the presentation. I wanted to understand, so are you using Axelar for a cross-chain messaging protocol? Yes, we use Axelar. So, so uh, is there any uh, reason you have choose Axelar over Layer 0 or other uh, cross-chain messaging protocol? Yeah, um, it's a really good question. We spent a long time, like before kind of a lot of the big names brought or went on to Axelar, like Microsoft, uh, um, et cetera. Um, Fundamentally, it comes down to fees for the end user um, because we are bundling our transactions into essentially the fees for the end user. We want to make it as, as cheap as possible. Um, layer zero reliance on chain link means in general, it's going to be more expensive uh, for the same general message passing. Um, Axelar also has more availability in terms of different chains as well as logic. Um, and that's mainly having to do with the fact that while we originally started this as an EVM project, um, they have kind of the EVM side as well as the Cosmos and IBC side. 
uh, which gives a fair amount of optionality that I don't think really exists in any other ecosystem. Um, and that's really the main difference. Um, but there are starting to be things that come out where um, we can integrate like Uniswap X, uh, for example. Right now we can do a transfer and swap feature directly in via Squid Router. Um, but like there are other things where, for example, Uniswap X is is building along this this idea of okay, let's op, op, optimize the transfer layer. Let's make sure that it's the correct one um, or the correct one in terms of a fee structure. Uh, but that was ge generally our thinking, um, and I think remains today. Okay, and when you mention the transfer layer between on off ramp, and let's say uh, you are working with some banking uh, services. What are the uh, like? What are the challenges you will be facing in terms of regulations? Because in developing countries, there are a lot of challenges when you work with off uh, off ramp. So, like, yeah. how are you going to solve those challenges? So we don't. So you can kind of think of us as the universal resolver. We actually don't touch the assets. We don't run the rails. We are basically doing that one simple thing and base and then slapping on uh, a very appealing kind of web two focus or like a, a web two kind of interface on top of it. Um, KYC AML requirements are done by the on and off ramp and inflow outflow. Um, anything else, um, be it a public API, if it exists on the internet, um, we can bring it to basically directly into the DAP store, um, make a widget out of it, for example. Um, so the goal here and like what we, as we've talked to experts, especially uh, during Techstars, um, we at this stage do not believe we need a VASP license. We also do not believe that we need to handle really any of uh, uh, of this side because we don't actually touch the asset. Again, user controls, assets, keys, identity, data. Um, we couldn't even touch it if we wanted to. Uh, they would have to permission us. Um, and so that's I think that's the way that we've been strategizing around getting around that very important point. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much for that, judges. Do you have any other questions? Oh, just one more question. Uh, just uh, you mentioned that uh, you will be providing APIs and you uh, the users will be having unique IDs across the chain, right? Yep. How does that work? Like, let's say I uh, I have an ID Vishal dot zero x, and I will be using the same ID across multiple protocols. That that's what you have mentioned, right? So underneath the hood, we're doing the resolving and, and the routing is done by Axelar. But basically the resolving is done towards, if you remember that slide where it shows the wallet manager, the resolving mm -hmm. is done towards a existing um, wallet address. Um, and so like, you know, you can even use it in the functionality. Like I want to put my Ethereum address as Coinbase. Anything sent to jesse.ox immediately hits that wallet right now. You can also use the security paradigm to keep it in there. But because it's just a public address um, and the user can so effectively sign um, a, a transaction, they can also use that as a way to just kind of manage more or less internal single sign-on to um, uh, to any of these dApps across multiple ecosystems. So there's actually a, a essentially a public a public key underneath that a public private key underneath that actually does that. Um, does and that make who sense? is who is going to who is going to take that decision? Which uh, chain is going to be used, user or your backend? Sorry, I, I'm not. I don't know if so I understand. Let's say, yeah, yeah. So let's say there are uh, four or five blockchains that I am currently interacting with, and I am currently interacting with let's say Ethereum and Polygon. Uh, so let's say I'm uh, doing one transactions which can transfer my asset from Ethereum to Polygon chain. So is user is going to choose the both chain on their side or is it a mapping from your side uh, which is automatically choose the network uh, who I'm going to interact with? So in the event of cross-chain stuff, um, it's the user's choice how they want to route. Um, and specifically, like one of the things we're working on is the ability for me to select, okay, I want all incoming funds to transfer into USDT, for example. But in the term, in terms of like cross chain, um, the the user selects essentially which chain they would like to run the instance on. Um, does that is that answering the question or? Okay, yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, it's full Thank user you. optionality throughout. The idea is that we provide the infrastructure and and basically get out of the way um, throughout the basically throughout the entire stack. Okay. 